Hey there YouTube. Today we're going to be looking at the ProScan Action Camera HD 720p. This retails for approximately $25. And we're going to get into this in just a second. Say you're out there and you want to take video of whatever you're doing, whether it be snorkeling or skateboarding, riding your bike. Well, that's where action cameras come into play. You probably are familiar with the most famous brand of action camera, which is GoPro. Then there are other options from, say, Nikon, DJI, and other companies. At the base budget, end of the scale, we have products from companies such as Vivitar and ProScan. This is one such product. This is the ProScan HD 720p action camera. The company who is responsible for ProScan products was kind enough to put all of the specifications here on the side of the package for us to see. And that is very commendable because that's honest marketing. It says that the screen is 2 inches. It will record 720p or VGA in 30 frames per second. It has a 1.3 megapixel image sensor. It has a micro USB port. It has a lithium ion battery which you can actually take it out. It has a fixed focus lens. That means you can't adjust via zoom or anything else. It's just one field of view. Now, it says it has a card slot on it, which will accept micro SD cards. It records video in AVI format. It records still images in JPEG format. It was supposedly able to support cards up to 32 gigabytes in size and it says that the aperture is f2.9 it also says it has a built-in microphone aperture which is the correct f indication is how much light is allowed in through the lens of the camera let's open this thing up here Now, inside of this box, you get the waterproof housing, the camera, which is inside of the waterproof housing whenever you get it. There is this plastic holder that holds the unit onto the rest of the box, which I find makes for a nice stable platform if you set it on a desk. Now, opening up the box, you have helmet mount, and the connector for the helmet mount, which is attached to the back because I had attempted to use it. There are two mesh straps for attaching to a helmet. I tried to use them as sort of a headband option for whenever I was out magnet fishing. That didn't work. Uh, they weren't long enough to achieve that. You have a holder which you can slide the helmet mount into. You have two threaded ends for either attaching to a tripod or using this adapter for your mounting kit. This has a threaded end. This wheel will provide tension against the body of whichever item you have holding the camera whether it be this or one of the other pieces. If you are using the bicycle mount, which I'll show you here in a second, you do need to use this piece. The final mounting kit piece is the bicycle mount here. We did use the bicycle mount, this intermediary piece, and this outer shell during the testing. 
all testing footage will be shown at the very end of the video because I don't want to detract from the rest of the video. It is there for the record. Also inside of this box you'll find some extra pads for the mounting kit for the helmet. You have the instruction booklet and you also have the statement for the limited warranty. Now, one thing to keep in mind, uh, like I said before, if you're using this holder and you want to use the bike mount, you will need this piece. What I didn't say is that also part of this piece is another connector. So that you do have two connectors here and they will fit together like so and then you would take one of the pins that you see that are like this and you would screw it in through here and it would just lock in place unfortunately during our testing what we found out is that this thing will just go plunk or clunk. You'll see that during the section of the video where I'm taking it for a ride on my mountain bike. I'm just going to put the connecting pieces back here into the box. It would have been more useful rather than having the helmet mount, it would have been more useful if they just had a head strap or if they had a chest mount included. That would have given better options. Now, the waterproof housing, it says here on the box that it is supposed to be waterproof to 98 feet. I was not able to test that out. Why? Because my local lake is not 98 feet deep. It is 40 feet at its maximum depth, but I did go out in the kayak and proceeded to send the camera to the bottom of the lake, all 40 feet of it, attached to a rope, left it down there for half an hour, and then pulled it back up, and I did find that no water got inside of the housing. Now, keep in mind that due to the time that I went out there, which was at night, and my lack of scuba certification, and the required scuba equipment. I do have most of my equipment, but I still have more to buy, and I still need to get my certification. I was not able to do any button presses at that depth. So I do not know if there is a point where this camera housing will leak if you press a button. During the snorkeling testing, I was able to press the buttons just fine. No water got inside the housing. So I was rather pleased with that. Now, we're going to get to the camera itself. As you can see, it's a fairly small device. It has four buttons on it. You have your power button, you have your OK button, and you have your selection buttons. You have your lens right here that is fixed, that does not turn, that does not adjust. It is one fixed field of view. Does not have an internal iris to limit the amount of light. I am going to turn this on after a second here, but first, here we see on the side there is a micro USB connector just like the box said that is I believe USB 2.0 and then we have our SD card slot for the micro SD they say that it will support up to 32 gigabytes I do not have a card that large but I did test it with a 16 gigabyte card as you can see here the card worked just fine no problems, so it definitely does support 16. 
Also at the top of the camera you have the little LED indicator for whenever it's powered on. Down here at the bottom is where you can access the battery. It is a removable battery. One of the nicer features of this camera is that for its size and for the amount that you spend on it, the battery life is fairly decent. You can expect to get maybe one to two hours of recording time out of this device. I don't know how that translates into still images, but the video would be the more demanding task, so that is an impressive amount of time. We're going to turn this on here. You'll hear it chime here. All right. You have a little power indicator on the back. You also have the power indicator on the top. I currently have the camera set in video mode. One thing to note whenever you're navigating the menus is that each mode has its independent menu. So I'm going to turn this around. You'll get to see it. Here's the screen. You have your battery indicator there. You have the current mode right there and then you have which mode for the camera itself you are in. This is the setting mode. For the video this is 720 and not set to VGA. If I changed over into a still image this icon would change or if I was in sound recording mode also changed. You have right here on the camera this little microphone port. You probably can't really see it that well. To access the menu, you press and hold the OK button down for two seconds. You have options here. You can see the size, which is 720p. That can change between 720 or VGA. Timestamp, that is if you want a time signature to show up in your videos. Then you have motion detect, which I'm not sure if that is related to some sort of a sensor in the camera to see if the camera moves or if it's trying to track if something passes in front of the lens. And then it is supposed to start recording at that point. I did not test that feature. There is a video time, which it gives you a countdown timer on your screen, but does not add it into the footage. You have the option to turn on and off the microphone with voice record. If you press the OK button here in the front, one time, that takes you out of the menu. But I'm going to go back into the menu and let we'll us go in there. To the one thing that you should keep in mind, I almost forgot about this is that when you're in the menu you have two different tabs to access the second tab you hold the button down for two seconds on the second tab for setup you have the format option the language option the camera timer for how long it will stay powered on before it turns itself off the system reset function which will reset all of the settings to their factory state and then a light frequency option. Light frequency is used to reduce flicker from electric lighting. And also, if you're attempting to record video or pictures of a computer monitor, that can reduce the amount of flicker off of those as well. All right. Exiting out. In the camera mode, you have the options of 5 megapixel, 3 megapixel, or 1.3 megapixel still images. You can select between those two just by going into the options. You also have a sound recording mode. I wouldn't really bother with this for reasons we will get into in just a moment. And then of course you have your playback option. Now, now that we've gone over the features here, I'm going to power the camera down. 
and we are going to go over the results of our testing. The camera sensor. Let's get started with that, as that is the weakest point of this camera. It is a 1.3 megapixel sensor. What that results in is very grainy videos. Uh, the optics aren't that great either. They're semi-okay, but they are just a little bit blurry. Whenever you couple that with the grainy video, it looks something akin to a 1980s VHS camcorder. Maybe a little bit worse. Now, it is probably semi-decent at taking a still picture in its 5 megapixel mode, or even its 3 megapixel mode. Uh, the sensor is easily overwhelmed by bright light, and it does have quite a bit of an issue in even just shade. It gets rather dark if you're standing under a tree, which most other cameras would sort of compensate for. They wouldn't struggle as much, but this gets very dark. One thing to keep in, keep in mind here, uh, whenever I was recording the video footage on the mountain bike, is that despite having 1.3 megapixel sensor, the video footage was lagging. It would just lag. It couldn't keep up with the motion. And that is because the processing unit inside of that is not very capable, to say the least. The audio recording functionality of that, whenever you're recording, is very inconsistent. Uh, whenever you're recording, the volume just tends to either start cutting out or ramp itself way up. I can forgive the recording distance. Uh, it's very quiet normally. If you're about two and a half feet away, you can't really hear much. If you have it fairly close by, it'll record a bit better. But as mentioned, the volume just kind of ramps up and down out of nowhere. So the audio really isn't that good. It's fairly noisy as well. So those are the biggest detractors of this. Build quality is not bad. They just used cheap components. So the bigger problem is the internals. Uh, one thing I do not like about the exterior shell is this glossy back. So whenever you're in any sort of light, you tend to get a glare. It makes the screen even harder to read than it already is. The screen isn't very bright. So when you're outdoors, you can't really see what's on the screen. So very often, you won't be able to tell if it's actually recording or not. It would have been nicer if this power indicator for whenever you're recording would change a different color. That would make it easier to identify so that you don't have to rely on the screen. I'm going to set this back on the desk here, so that's out of the way. I did do underwater testing while snorkeling of the camera. I was doing button presses on the underwater housing. That worked just fine, didn't leak at all. But I was also in six and a half feet of water, so there was no real water pressure to worry about either. Which makes that the nicest feature of this camera. In the video footage you're going to see in just a second, you're going to notice all of the issues that I've been talking with. I did cut that footage down. Uh, originally I had the footage from the kayak when I dunked the camera in the deepest part of the lake, but I am not going to add that into the video because that doesn't really add anything. My end result is that even at $25 and trying to be a bit more lenient on things given the price of it I still can't recommend this camera it's not something that you would buy even just to get started and they're gonna switch up later on no uh, this is something that you might hand a five-year-old who wants to show you their trick that they learned on their bike that they're gonna show in front of the camera or if they just want to show you an adventure where they're just taking the camera around, running around, and going off and doing something, 
the video quality isn't great and it's very easily overwhelmed in dark environments even just shade from a tree uh, it's easily overwhelmed by bright light so it tends to wash out the audio isn't any good the video isn't any good which you would think 1.3 megapixel sensor isn't sending a lot of data but the processor can't handle it and ends up stuttering honestly the best suggestion that i would have is to save your money and go for something a bit higher quality your starting price point i would recommend is fifty dollars and up now mind you can you can still find not so great products in a fifty dollar price range you can find not so great products at a hundred to two hundred dollar price range but you have a much better chance of finding a decent product starting at the $50 price range and going up. Uh, companies like DJI, uh, Nikon, I think at one point Sony made a action camera. I might be confusing that with 360 degree cameras, but there are very many other options uh, the most notable being Gro uh, GoPro with their Hero series for what it is what its price is normally if the video quality were a bit better I'd probably be able to give this a C but since the main purpose of having one of these cameras is for the video and it's a bit blurry it's very grainy and the processing unit inside of here cannot keep up with the video data despite the small sensor it just isn't worthwhile for it i can't i have to give it an f that is my final opinion on this it gets an f I will give them points because they did list the specifications on the outside of the box. Very often when you run across cheap products like this, they will try to hide as much information as possible. And if they do give you a number, it will be, say, for the still image capture because it is a higher number than what the megapixel rating of the sensor is. For instance, the Vivitar branded camera that is like this, the only number that you can find on the box is 5 megapixel. But I'm almost certain that that is going to be for a still image, not for video. Here we go. Package that back up in the box. I am sure there is some sort of a use for one of these cameras. If you can pick one up, uh, potentially used at a yard sale or something for maybe five dollars then it might be worth playing around and tinkering with but if you're trying to do anything serious like for youtube or other purposes like that semi-professional environment just completely avoid it uh i would not buy it so that being said i'm gonna let you watch the video results for yourself we'll be back in just a minute
Hey guys, Tech Loose here. I've got the action camera mounted on the bike for right now. Uh, one thing you're going to notice is that the angle is going to be a little bit off. I have to adjust that because the mounting kit is on the angle of my bar there. Now, one thing to make mention of, this camera is going to flop back and forth because the mounting kit is not the greatest. The actual part that holds it onto the handlebars is fine, but what you see is the piece that I needed to turn the camera sideways just kind of moves around in the socket. No matter how tight I've got it, it's just going to flop right over. So we'll try to work with that, see if we can get this footage because I want to get this review over and done with, finally. Let's see if we can adjust the angle on the camera to match the rise of the handlebar. As you can see, this just wobbles really bad. And we'll go for a short ride here. camera.
All right, and we're back so we can close the video out. Now that you've seen the video evidence itself, you can understand why I would not recommend this product. I am sure I'll probably still get some results going, you bought a cheap product just to hate on it. I think I was rather fair in this review. And if it seems like I'm hating on the product, well, so be it. Anyway, if you liked the video, feel free to give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give me a thumbs down. If you didn't care either way, thank you for watching. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at TechLose. If you follow me there, you'll be able to keep track of what I'm working on when I'm releasing new videos, potentially what I'm recording videos of, and a host of other things. So, feel free to follow me there. Uh, don't forget that I also do have the Discord. The link is always in the About section of the channel. But oftentimes I will link it in the description below. If I do not link it in the description below, just remember that you can find that link in the About section of the channel. Until next time, this is Tech Lose to Tech Reviewing Recluse, and I will see you again.